Dexter, what character do you think we should cover today? Huh? Who's your, who's your favorite character? Okay, see you later. Ladies and gentlemen, as you guys know on this channel, I like to cover this backstory of various different Call of Duty characters. Whether that be someone like Captain Price or Frank Woods, whatever game they're in, we've covered a lot of them. Definitely not all of the characters, but a good chunk of them. One thing I have never done on this channel is go through the various different zombies characters. However, that has literally been one of the most requested things on this channel. And I don't know if I'm going to, I haven't committed to that or anything, but I will say I do think the backstory of Samantha Maxis is probably one of the, if not the most interesting backstory of any character in any Call of Duty game ever. So I don't know, if you guys want to see me dive into some zombies characters, maybe I can get some of the zombies community involved uh, and help me out because it's much more in-depth story than just a one or two campaigns put together. So let me know what you think. If you want to see it, hit that like button. Let me know your opinion down in the comments. You can say whether you want to see it, whether you don't want to see it. But as far as today's video goes, it's kind of a crossover video between the old Black Ops storyline and the new zombie storyline. And that is, of course, the story that we're going into today with the full story of Grigori Weaver. November 10th, 1936, Weaver was born in the USSR, aka Russia, just to make things easy. Now, as far as his early life, his backstory is actually pretty cool. His father was a local political figure who was killed during Stalin's Great Purge. Now, if you don't know what that is, I didn't either, I had to look it up, but basically what this was is a cleansing, as they called it, against ethnic minorities, the Communist Party, and of government officials and leadership in the Red Army. And because Weaver's father was a political figure, he was involved in that. Now, at the time, this massacre included 950,000 to 1.2 million people. This is something I didn't know about, but is entrenched in Weaver's backstory. Now, after the death of Weaver's father, him and his mother fled to the United States to seek refuge. Now, after getting to the United States and becoming a Russian American, we don't know much about this time period, but eventually Weaver joins the CIA, and that is where his story begins in Black Ops 1. <laughs> Operation Flashpoint, taking place in the USSR at the Cosmodrome. Weaver was sent in to infiltrate Dragovich's launch facility and stop the launch of a rocket. However, Weaver was captured, and well, we know what happens next. Damn, it's Weaver. He's burnt. Your colleague is unwilling to explain his presence in this facility. Who the fuck is this? Surrender now, and you will be allowed to leave. It's Kravchenko. Dragovich is second in command. Your only warning. There's nothing we can do, Mason. Weaver's done, but no. Your choice. This is not good. Now, at this point, Kravchenko actually gives them the option to save Weaver by turning themselves in. If Woods and Mason turn themselves in, Weaver is set free, but they don't comply, and, well, Kravchenko goes straight for the eye to turn Weaver into a pirate. Now, a little bit of a side note here. In Black Ops Cold War, we find out about Stitch, a man who was tasked with creating Nova 6 gas, working under Kravchenko, and while Adler was interrogating him, this is what he says. When I met Russell Adler, he could not Break me. Tell your boss, this is for Weaver. So Adler says here, tell your boss that this one is for Weaver, obviously talking about Kravchenko and taking and the eye for an eye method, taking Stitch's eye for Weaver's eye. Now, the interesting thing about this is that we've never actually seen Adler and Weaver interact, and they've never actually been in the campaign of a COD at the same time. Yet still, from this, we know that they know each other, and we're gonna dive a little bit more into that when it gets to the zombies portion of things. Now, going back to Operation Flashpoint, Eventually, Mason is able to get in there and actually save Weaver. At this point, he does become a pirate, having to wear an eye patch, but he forgoes the parrot and peg leg. Now, you'd think after losing an eye, you'd reconsider some life decisions and maybe pull back out of the CIA, or at least out of some field work, which eventually he will do. But at this point, he's not done. In the next mission we see Weaver, he is sent in to Kowloon City to investigate someone by the name of Daniel Clark. Not what you have to lose. Hey, we got plenty of windows. Or you can give us what we want and we guarantee your safety. <laughs> I'm already a dead man. I've been hunted across every corner of the globe. If you 
found me, so will they. They know everything you know. They're probably on their way now. Why? Dragovich doesn't like loose ends. I've never even dealt with him directly. Only Steiner, the German. What was the nature of your business? I was hired to help stabilize certain volatile compounds. What kind of compound? Nova 6. So Daniel Clark is actually one of the doctors hired to stabilize Nova 6 gas, meaning he actually worked alongside Stitch. And as Hudson and Weaver interrogate Daniel Clark there, this is the first time Weaver would be hearing about this Nova 6 gas. That'll be of a little bit more importance later on. Now after this, they are hunted through Kowloon City and they try to escape alongside Daniel Clark so they can use him as an asset. And well, this is what ends up happening. But as far as Weaver's story goes, the next time we see him is on Mount Yamantau. Now, what they were trying to do on this mission was find Steiner but they're really, really unsuccessful in that. However, they do find out about where Steiner is, and that is, of course, on Rebirth Island. So Hudson and Weaver's next step is to get to Rebirth Island. However, they already know that Alex Mason is going there. So getting there, they are late to the party, and when they do eventually get to Steiner, this is what they end up witnessing. Mason, what are you doing? We need him alive! Help Stand me. up! Stand up! My name! It's Victor Redlock, and I will have my revenge! Mason, no! I'm fine. Check Steiner. He's dead. So this is really the big twist point within Black Ops 1. And at this point, we realize that the defector is Alex Mason and he needs to be interrogated. And as we find out this entire time, the interrogation that's being put on on Alex Mason is actually being held by Hudson and Grigori Weaver. I'm with him, your choice. Damn it! Why can't you remember? Reznov's dead, Mason. Do you hear me? He's dead! Weaver's right. We're out of time. The Russians fucked you up. I know you. You're not a traitor. Now, we're not going to go through the entire interrogation here in all of Mason's story, but by the end, Weaver and Hudson are able to get out of Mason the Rasulka, the location of the launch facility and what the numbers actually mean. And by the time they get there, they are able to stop Dragovich, and as they escape, Weaver ends up pulling Mason out of the water, and the heroes save the day. Now, up until this point, aside from getting stabbed in the eye, Weaver's story is relatively straightforward, but this is actually where things start to change. You see, we We've talked about this before, but there's something within the CIA at this point called Operation Cherubitas. It takes place in the year 1978, and essentially, the CIA decides that Mason is no longer an asset and rather a threat. So at this point, they actually put out a hit on Mason, Woods, Hudson, and Weaver by association. And yes, if you're reading this, it does say that John Price is the person to carry out this assassination. Now keep in mind, this operation is taking place in 1978, and this is actually where the Black Ops Cold War story converges. And they never go over what happens between 1978 and 1983. They don't explain why Weaver is not in the campaign, but you can only assume is because he was desk bound. And we'll get to that in a second. What I mean by this is in the year 1983, Requiem was founded, essentially a division of the CIA essentially for the supernatural. And I truly believe that the MK Ultra portion of the campaign, which is where Bell actually gets given the MK Ultra mind control and things like that, were originally what Requiem was founded for. Even looking at the logo is this is what it seems like. However, I think later on, once Samantha Maxis approaches Weaver with the tape and with this information is when they then more so get focused on zombies. What 
have you done? Did you get the package? We've lost two teams since you went dark. Old war footage is the last thing on my mind right now. Watch it. Watch the tape. Then tell me I'm wrong. How did you get hold of this? A friend in the KGB. A late friend. Germans have Russian friends? Yeah, some of us do. shot one week later. So you may be wondering at this point, what is Weaver's role in all of this? As I mentioned before, I think after 1978, once Weaver was being investigated by the CIA, he got desk bound. They put him on desk jobs until he was the lead of something called Requiem, something that the CIA didn't think would ever come to be anything. But once approached by Samantha Maxis, all of a sudden Weaver is in charge, the commanding officer and the leader of Requiem, something responsible for now these zombies outbreaks. And essentially Weaver's role in this is to coordinate and send in operators to take care of the job. And by the end of Project End Station, which was the first zombies map that we have, they were able to close the ether and well, the end station kind of explodes. So I only have one other question at the end of this. I would love to know how Weaver knows Samantha Maxis. It's the one question out of all of this that I don't have the answer to and they never really say it. They just said they're long acquaintances. That's all we know. And hopefully throughout the rest of the zombies map, we get to know a little bit more because Weaver is the one sending in soldiers to these different sites. With Firebase Z just around the corner, I'm interested to see where Weaver's story goes. If he just stays a background character working in the office or whether he gets some more cutscenes and voice lines moving forward. For that, we'll have to wait and see. What I will say though, is that Weaver was a character that never returned in Black Ops 2. And I'm wondering if by the end of the DLC, for zombies, we might actually see the demise of Weaver, the death of Weaver. I'm not 100% sure, but I do know he was in Black Ops 1, Cold War, and nowhere to be seen in Black Ops 2. But as far as Weaver goes, that has been his full story, at least so far. So hopefully you enjoyed. If you did, it's always appreciated if you hit that like button. If you're new to the channel, like what you see, want to stay up to date on all my videos, want to stay up to date on all the Call of Duty story, be sure to hit that subscribe button. And as always, let me know what you think down in the comments. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time. Well, apparently Dexter says peace out.